Hi students, good evening. Welcome to this video session. My name is Samuel Dominic Chupu Emeka, aka Some Dumb for Peace. In this video session, we shall discuss uh, the section 3.2 homework. Section 3.2 deals with uh, measures of Senna. Uh, it deals with measures of Senna, or you can say measures of central tendency. Uh, these measures are the mean, the median, the mode, and the mid range. Uh, please, it is highly recommended that you have that you view the videos on uh, the measures of Senna as well as uh, read the notes. Uh, it is very important that you read the notes and view the videos on the measures of Senna. Uh, the links are on my website. Uh, then you can then view this video, this study guide. Uh, I call it a study guide video. And then you can now begin your homework assignment. As usual, in this video, we are going to use only technology. So uh, in the videos you have to view before this one, I solved it on the board. I solved it on the board. But in this video, we will just use the uh, we'll just use technology to answer the questions. The two technologies we are going to use, uh, the two main technologies we shall use uh, would be the calculator on my website and the PSN start crunch. Okay. Calculator on my website and then the PSN Start Crunch software on the My Start Lab. So uh, let's get to my website. I'm going to open up um, another web browser. Uh, let's use my, the mob, my mobile friendly site. So I'll type my name and uh, I will just type AppSpot. To get to my mobile friendly site, and that is this one chukwemeka samuel.axpot.com. Um, so I click on it, I will click uh, mathematics, uh, I click statistics, and then uh, these are the videos uh, videos on descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics that uh, is. Uh, recommended you view these videos. Uh, measures of central tendency or measures of center. And uh, these are the notes here. Okay. Uh, the notes are these two right here. Those are the notes. And you can also look at the solved examples on measures of center. So the calculator I will use, I will click on resources to get it, and it will be descriptive statistics calculator. So I'm gonna open it, descriptive statistics calculator. Uh, let me expand it so you see it. Uh, these are the symbols. If you click on the symbols, you see the symbols. It is important that you know all these symbols. These are the symbols you're gonna use in statistics. Uh, this is not uh, the entire list. You will still get to know other symbols as we move on. Okay? And if you click on these links, it will take you to the pages. So we're going to use this calculator and then your start crunch. Those are the calculators we're going to use. All right, let's begin. Question one. <clears throat> A 
in an editorial, the Poughkeepsie Journal printed this statement. The median price, which is the price exactly in between the highest and lowest, you know, and so on, it continues. Does this statement correctly describe the median? Why or why not? Uh, the median price is not the price exactly in between the highest and lowest. No, that's not the definition. Uh, the median is just the, uh, the middle value when the data values are arranged in ascending order or descending order. So it's not the price exactly in between the highest and the lowest. No, that is the mid range instead. So it does not describe the median, it describes the mid range. Okay. Question two, listed below are the top 10 annual salaries in millions of dollars of TV personalities. Find the mean, median, mode, and mid-range for the given sample data in millions of dollars. Given that these are the top 10 salaries, do we know anything about the salaries of TV personalities in general? Are such top 10 lists valuable for gaining insight into the larger population? So um, let's let's do this. Some questions I will do with my calculator. Some questions I will do with StatCrunch. So let's do it that way, okay? Let's start with my calculator, and then the next question we do with StatCrunch, and we can do it that way. Uh, and uh, I'm using my calculator because uh, some questions here is important that you do it in my calculator. Okay, and some other questions here uh, is important you do it with StatCrunch, especially when the data is uh, is uh, big. You know, if it's if it's a uh, if it's big data. So for this question, let me just do it with my uh, calculator. So I'm gonna go to uh, I'm gonna go to uh, Measures of Senna. Measures of Senna. I'll click on this and uh, let me just add this. So, this is the Measures of Senna right here. Measures of Senna. And I'm going to put this, type the X values, separate each value with a comma. Do not put a period at the end. So, I will just type it 38.6, uh, 35.8. Thirty-five point seven, twenty-seven point seven, uh, fourteen point four, twelve. Each value you type, just put a comma. Then twelve point seven, ten point four, nine point four, eight point six. After the last value, please do not put a comma or period. Just leave it like that. Okay? And this is a good practice for typing. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Just when you, after doing this, just press calculate. Calculate. Here we see that the mean, the mean is x bar. Uh, if you look at this, I put the symbols here. x bar means sample mean. Anywhere in statistics, you see x bar. It means sample mean, okay? X meander is the median, X hat is the mode, X MR is the mid range. So uh, it's good you, and these are in the uh, formulas, okay? So it's good you look at those. Uh, the mean is uh, 20.53. You can round it to two decimal places, 20.53. Uh, the median is a uh, 13.55. Uh, with the median, you see, before you, and 
why my calculator is uh, is important is that assuming you were taking this class in a traditional setting, uh, if you were taking this class in a traditional setting, uh, some professors will want you to show all your steps, all the steps. And uh, some professors, you know, will be picky. They want you to arrange the data first. They want to see this, the sorted data. You arrange it first before you can find the median. So uh, with my calculator, it shows you the steps. That's why I put here, show all steps. So if you were taking this class, uh, if you were taking this course in class, then uh, this calculator is useful, very useful. Uh, so the median is 13.55. Uh, the mode, uh, the mode, um, th this mode only works if you have no mode uh, or unimodal one mode uh, and bimodal two modes. So uh, if you're using this calculator, just know that, that uh, it's it, for the mode, it works if there is no mode, and uh, that is non-modal, or one mode, uh, or two modes. That's the degree of accuracy for this calculator. So in this case, uh, the mode, they wrote the whole data. So that tells you this whole sorted data. So this tells you that there is no mode. Anytime you see the whole data written, it tells you there's no mode, okay? The mid-range XMR, the mid-range is 23.6, 23.6. Okay, um, given that these are the top 10 salaries, do we know anything about the salaries of TV personalities in general? Uh, this the data value are the top ten salaries. It didn't give us any information about the salaries of TV personalities in general. No, okay. So the correct option will be C, uh, since the sample values are the ten highest. They give us almost they give almost no information about the salaries of TV personalities in general. Okay. Um, are such top 10 lists valuable for gaining insight into the larger population? Well, uh, no. Uh, these top 10 lists are just, uh, if you look at this, it says option A, yes, because such top 10 lists give partial information about the population. Uh, no. This top 10 list is not. Uh, you, you look at D, it says yes, because the mean, median, and mid-range are relatively reliable, even with small samples. So, but these top 10 lists are just that, like, you know, if you come, if you bring it down over here, you say the top 1%, <laughs> right? The top 1% control the other 99% in, based on financial worth. So this top 10 salaries, no. It doesn't give us insight into the larger population, no. It just gives us only about that top 1% or something, you know. Like, I'm, I didn't say this was the top 1%, but this is the top 10 salaries. So it gives us that information about those people who are really, 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 really rich. Okay, because these are millions of dollars. That's a lot of money. Uh, so uh, you... A and D is not is not correct. Uh, so I would go with B because uh, such top ten lists represent an extreme subset of the population, yeah, rather than the larger population. So it's B. <coughs> Question three uh, listed below are the annual tuition amounts of the ten most expensive colleges in a country for a recent year. What does this top 10 list tell us about the population 
of all of that country's college tuitions. Okay. Uh, this here, we, I, we can use start crunch for this question. So this is how you do with start crunch, okay? You see this icon right here? You see this icon right here? Uh, you click on it. When you point at it, it says click to copy table. You click it. Then you open a start crunch. And I'm going to put this right here so you can see. We want to find mean, mean, mid range, median, and mod. So we will go to start, start. You go to summary stats. You point your mouse, summary stats. You go to columns. Now you can, if you want, like if you were gonna print this report, uh, you know, it is always good to like name your variable. This is va variable one, variable two, variable three, var one, var two, var three. So it's always good to name your variable if assuming you were uh, doing a major project, uh, you're working for a firm and you need to run some statistical analysis. So you can just put variable one, okay? So I'm just gonna name this, it doesn't matter, I'll just name salaries, how about it? I can just name salaries, okay? And once you put it, press the enter, that's fine. So, um, no, I'm sorry, this is not salaries, this is tuition. <laughs> tuition, my bad, this is tuition. Uh, if you are gonna say college tuition, as you can see, these variables, there's no space. You might wanna just name it so that you don't have space between the uh, the words or the letters, okay? So I'm just gonna put tuition. I like, I like, like naming variables. You know, I, I'm a computer scientist as well. So I prefer naming the variables than just using var one, var two, var three. But if you don't, if you like, don't name the variables, that's fine. Uh, but if you were working for a firm or company, and you are gonna print out your results, the results your of the uh, your results or the report of uh, whatever statistical analysis you did, then it is preferable you name your variables. So I'm gonna go to start summary stats columns because this is the column I need summary start columns, and I select tuition. If you did not name your variable. You will see it as var one, okay. So um, we need to find mean, mid range, median, and merge. So look at what I do. I click on mean. Now it says here select more than one with shift plus click or command plus click. I am using Mac. I am using Mac at the moment, so I'm gonna use command plus click. So first of all, I click on mean mean and then I hold the command key I press on the command key I press on it and then I put my arrow here and I'm gonna look for mid range I'm gonna scroll down to look for mid range mid range okay I don't see mid range I do not okay and that is one thing we start crunch hopefully Maybe if they get to, if any of them get to watch this video, they will try to put mid-range if they want to. But I don't see mid-range. I see range, but I don't see mid-range. Okay? And you cannot say range divided by two would be mid-range. No. No. The mid-range is a mean minimum plus maximum divided by two. Okay. I don't see mid-range, so I'll just select minimum. My hand is still on the command key. I don't release it. I do not. You still have to hold it. And I click maximum. These two values will help me to find the mid range. And then I need to find the median. So I scroll down to look for median. I click median. And then the last one is the merge. I scroll down again to find the merge. Then I can release my hand. Okay. So you if, if you're using windows you have to after you click on mean then you 
use your hand to hold down the shift um, key and then you click on me um, a minimum maximum median and the mode and then you release it you release your finger I mean you use your finger and hold the key and click on the minimum maximum median and mode then you can release it okay and then you click compute you just click compute so this tells us that the mean it says round to two decimal places as needed so the mean is five two six two three enter okay uh the uh the mid range i will have to add do add this two and divide by two to get me the mid range so i'm just gonna go and get uh look for a calculator here applications mac has a very simple calculator which I wish they had a better uh, scientific one, but this one can do us. So I will just add this five one two eight seven plus five four zero eight six equal to then divide by two equal to round to two places round to two decimal places as needed. So this will give us 52686.5. Uh, rounding to two decimal places as needed. As needed, um, the as needed means that if your answer is less than two decimal places, then just write your answer like that. However, if your answer is if your answer is two decimal places, you also write it that way. However, if your answer is more than two decimal places, then you have to round it to two decimal places. That is what it means. Again, I repeat, the as needed means if your answer is um, less than two decimal places, write it as is. If your answer is two decimal places, write it as is. If your answer is more than two decimal places, then you have to round to two decimal places. That is what round to two decimal places as needed means. That is what it means, okay? Uh, I'm gonna minimize this. <coughs> then the, uh, the median is uh, five, two, two, nine, three, point five. And the mode is uh, five four zero one two. Okay. Now, uh, what does what does uh, this top ten list tell us about the population of all the countries' college tuitions? Uh, this top ten list is just the top ten most expensive colleges. It doesn't tell us anything about the entire college, twi uh, entire tuition, uh, tuitions of different, uh, it doesn't tell us about the tuitions of the entire colleges we have in the country. Okay, so it just tells us the, uh, the tuition, the College tuition amounts of the top of the most the the, uh, the top expensive the top ten expensive colleges or I wouldn't say top ten of the ten most expensive colleges in the country that is all it tells us okay <clears throat> just like the similar question we did in question two that tells us about the top ten salary. Okay, so it doesn't give us the general picture. It doesn't tell us the general information about the tuition amounts of all other colleges in the country. So the correct option would be nothing meaningful can be concluded from this information. 
except that these are the largest tuitions of colleges in the country for a recent year. Okay. <clears throat> Question four. Listed below are head injury measurements from small cars that were tested in crashes. The measurements are in peak, which is a measurement of a standard head injury criterion. Lower hip values correspond to safer cars. Lower hip values correspond to safer cars. The listed values correspond to cars A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, respectively. So this is the hip value for car A, the hip value for car B, hip value for car C, hip value for car D, Hick value for car E, Hick value for car F, and Hick value for car G. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> so, find the mean. Uh, I think it's my turn to use my calculator. So, I'm going to go here. I can just reset this. If you click reset, it change, gives you a whole new thing. So, I'll put 564. Uh, 347, 395, 306, 533, 344, 495. And then I click calculate. <coughs> so the mean, like this mean is more than one decimal place. So the as needed means if it is more than one decimal place, we just round to only one decimal place. So this will give us 426.3. Okay. The median is uh, 395. 395. The mid range, the mid range is 435, 435. <coughs> Okay. The mode, the mode, there is no mode. Okay, non modal. There's no mode. Which car appears to be the safest? So let's look at the lowest hick value. The lowest hick value. Uh, we see that the lowest, and if you look at this, this is the lowest right here. Uh, the calculator, if you look at it, the sorted data set. The lowest is 306. And 306, this is A, B, C, D. Car D. Car D. Okay. <clears throat> then it says here, based on these limited results, do small cars appear to have about the same risk of head injury in a crash? Um, when we look at a... When we look at this uh, options, it says here yeah, yes because the data values differ substantially. Uh, no, because the data values differ substantially. No, because the data values do not differ substantially. Yes, because the data values do not differ substantially. Uh, if you look at this first, um, you, you look at these values. So when we talk about difference substantially, we are looking at 5%. Is it more than 5%? Like if we get, here we see the, uh, the maximum is 564, the minimum is 306. So if we take 5% of this, what will it be? Uh, if any of the values is more than 5% of another value, then it differs substantially. Okay, so let's look at this for example. Uh, if we take 5% of 564, that gives us 0 0.05 times 564, and then we subtract from 564. 
uh, if you put this, this plus 564. That's 564 minus 28.2. So 535.8. So we have, but we still have 306. So uh, through, this is way more than 5%, uh, way less than 5% of this. Okay, because 5% of 564 is 535.8. And 306 is way less than 535.8. So we have, you know, and even 344 is less than this. 347 is less than this. The values differ substantially. Okay. So uh, they don't appear to have the same risk. No. Uh, you wouldn't go with a car. You can't compare car D with car uh, A. That is 564. No, that's a lot. Okay, so uh, the the difference between both is more than 5%. So we say it's different. Uh, it differs substantially. So they don't have the same risk of head injury, no. So we say no <coughs> because the data values differ substantially. Question five. Um, start crunch turn, right? <laughs> the turn of start crunch. Um, listed below are the playing times in seconds of songs that we are popular at the time of this writing. Find the mean, median, mode, mid-range for the given sample data. Is there one time that is very different from the others? So, we click here, open a start crunch. And this var one, I'll just write it times. I'll just write time. I can write playing times. You see, that's, I didn't put any space. I didn't put any space for the variable. So playing times, I go to start, summary stats, columns, playing times. So I need mean, I hold the command key down. Uh, the next one is median. I scroll down till I see median, I click on it. I am still holding the command key down. And then I click merge, <coughs> merge, and then mid-range, I need the minimum and maximum, mean and max, to get the mid-range. And then I release my finger on the command key, and I click compute. So the mean to one decimal place would be 260.1. The median would be 248. The mode, uh, start crunch, uh, if there are multiple modes, start crunch does not compute it. So that's the limitation of start crunch. I hope they also fix it. Uh, we, uh, limitations of start crunch that we've seen so far, they didn't put mid range. And then if there are multiple modes, they don't do it. So uh, I'm going to use, uh, because I will just use my calculator in this question. How about it? I'll use my calculator. So I'm just going to close this. Uh, if there are multiple modes, and the question wants you to use a comma to separate answers, you got to do it. So uh, start crunch is not helping us in this particular question to find the mode. So I'm going to use my calculator, okay? Uh, I'm going to reset this. Reset. <coughs> and uh, I will put, uh, I will just type in the data, 445, 241, comma, 234, comma, 248, comma, 248, 296. 
267, 236, 211, 258, 259, 257. All right. Calculate. So the mean, of course, is 260.1. Median is 248, just to verify. Now the mode, the mode is, is this is bimodal, okay? So the mode is 211 and 248, but that is here, 211, 248, okay? Uh, the mid-range is 328. Three, uh, is there one time that is very different from the others? Well, let's look at the options. Uh, yes, the time of 296 seconds is very different from the others. Um, if you look at this data, the only, all these are like 241, 234, 248 in twos. It's only this first one, 445, that is like, okay, uh, what's this guy here? This is a long playing time, long time. So A is out, no, 296 is not. Um, B, no, all the times are not very different from each other. If we take if we take 5% of 445, I'm sure it's more than all these. If it find 5% of 445, it's gonna be more than all these values. It's gonna be more than all these values. So there is this uh it differs significantly. So the B is not the correct option. Okay. See, yes, the time of 211 seconds is very different. No. C is out. D, yes, the time of 445 seconds is very different from the others. Yes. <clears throat> Question six. My turn. My calculator. My turn. An insurance institute conducted tests with crashes of new cars traveling at 6 miles per hour. The total cost of the damages was found for a simple random sample of the tested cars and listed below. Find the mean, median, mode, mid-range for the given sample data. Do the different measures of Senna differ very much. So, I'm going to click reset. Even if you don't click reset, it will still work. But I want to click, I click reset to give me a blank um, field. So let's type this 7514. Uh, please just type the numbers. Don't put 7 comma 514 no okay <clears throat> 4970 comma uh, 9063 comma 6388 comma 4264 and then you press calculate so the mean is uh 6439.8 Okay, that's the mean. The median is 6388. <coughs> the mode, uh, there is no mode. There's no mode. Okay. The mid range is uh, 6663. Five. Okay. I'm sorry, but I, I think I'll redo this question because I don't like what I just said. <laughs> hey! For some reason, I don't know why I said it. I don't like what I just said. So I'm gonna redo this question. Um, if we look at this here, the measures of Senna, the measures of uh, Senna. Are these numbers okay I'm not gonna repeat them uh, there is no much difference if we uh, they do not differ by uh, 
a very large amount okay they do not differ by very large amounts but there's a number I said before that I shouldn't have said for some reason so I'm gonna just do a similar question okay I hope you don't get mad do not be mad at me I shouldn't have said it seven five three three <laughs> Uh, four eight four four nine zero six five six three nine two four two nine six calculate okay yes this one is okay <laughs> so the mean is six four two six six four two six Okay, the median is six three nine two six three nine two. The mode is no mode, no mode, no mode. The mid range is six six eight zero point five. Okay, and they do not differ by very large amounts. Question seven. Start crunch. Listed below are the durations in hours of a simple random sample of all flights of a space shuttle. Find the mean, median, mode, mid range for the given data for the given sample data. Is there a duration time that is very unusual? How might that duration time be explained okay um i'm gonna go to uh this here opening start crunch <coughs> and these are times right these are uh duration okay durations uh we go to start summary starts columns durations Mean, uh, median, mode, then mid range. We can do mean and max. Mean, max. Okay. So the mean is two one seven uh, point three. The median is two three three. The mode is two three three. The mid range uh three eighty four divided by two uh will give us one ninety two, right? One ninety two. Okay. Uh is there a duration time that is very unusual? How might that duration time be explained? So look at all these times right here. Let's look at all these times here. Is there any of these times that are unusual? Uh, let's look at the options. No, there is no flight with an unusual duration time. No, the flights have unusual duration times. Re no, the flights have usual duration times ranging from zero to over 375 hours. Yes, the time of more than 375 hours is very unusual. It could represent a very long flight. <coughs> yes, the time of zero hours is very unusual. It could represent a flight that was aborted. Uh, so, if you look at this for a space shuttle, uh, flights of a space shuttle, uh, I think zero hours is very unusual. Okay, so uh, this here, the time of zero hours is very unusual. It could represent a flight that was about it. Question eight, my calculator. Yes. 
Listed below are the lead concentrations in uh, mg per g, will I say milligram per gram, measured in different samples of a medicine. What do the results suggest about the safety of this medicine? What do the decimal values of the listed amounts suggest about the precision of the measurements? So I'm going to put these values in my calculator 10, uh, 6.5, 14, 20.5. Nineteen, seven, <clears throat> ten point five, eighteen point five, twenty, twenty. Calculate. So the mean is fourteen point six, fourteen point six. The mid range is 13.5, 13.5, the median is 16.25, 16.25, the mode x hat, the mode is 20, is 20, okay, uh, what do the results suggest about the safety of this medicine? Um, there is nothing that really tells us, uh, you know, the question didn't say maybe a lead concentration above 3.5 is harmful or lead concentration above the social number. The question didn't say such. So, um, there is not enough information for any meaningful conclusion. Okay. What do the decimal values of the listed amounts suggest about the precision of the measurements? A. They are rounded to one half unit measurements uh, for the decimal values like 6.5, 20.5, 10.5, 18.5. Looks like they are rounded to one half because this is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Uh, B, they are rounded to one quarter unit measurements. That would be 0 0.25. So it's not B. C, they are rounded to one ten unit measurements. Okay. Uh, if probably if we had seen 20.2, 10.3, then we could say C. D, they are not rounded. D is not true. Because this looks like the decimal values. <coughs> so I would go with um, um, the correct option here would be one half. You know, I would go with one half unit measurements. Question nine, stat crunch. Listed below are the measured radiation emissions in W per kg kilogram corresponding to cell phones A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, and K respectively. The media often present reports about the dangers of cell phone radiation as a cause of cancer. Cell phone radiation must be 1.6 W per kg or less. Find the mean, median, mid-range, and mode for the data. Also complete part B. So we go to open this, open a start crunch. <coughs> um, and these are just radiation emissions. So I'll just call this uh, radiation and I'm gonna go to start summary stats columns radiation we need mean 
Then the second one, I hold down my command key. Second one is median. Uh, third one is mid range. So let me get the mean and the max. Mean, max. And the last one is mode. Mode. Okay, I click compute. So to three decimal places, the mean will be 0 0.955. Okay. The median is 0 0.88. 0.88. The mid range, uh, I get this calculator to do mid range. Um, 0 0.29 plus 1.55 equal to, then divide it by 2, 0 0.92. 0 0.92. And then the mode, there is no mode, no mode. If you are planning to purchase a cell phone, are any of the majors of Senna the most important statistic? Is there another statistic that is most relevant? If so, which one? Well, if I'm planning to purchase a cell phone, I will look at the one with the lowest radiation, minimum. The minimum one is very, very important. You can go with the maximum. So I'm going to look for the one with the, uh, with the minimum radiation. So, but let's look at the options. A, the maximum data value is the most relevant statistic because it is the closest to the limit of 1.6. W per kg, and that cell phone should be avoided. Okay, A, A is correct. Uh, B, the minimum data value is the most relevant statistic. Okay, I should think so because I want that's the one that I that I need to purchase. That if I have to, okay, because it is closest to the limit of one point six W per kg. Um. The minimum data value is not the closest to that. No. No. Okay, no. The minimum data value is not the closest to that. The minimum data value is 0 0.29. It's not the closest to 1.6. And that cell phone should be purchased. Okay, so um, the minimum data value is very relevant. It should be purchased, in my view. Uh, but it is not closest to 1.6. No. So B is out. C. The midpoint of the data set is the most important statistic because cell phones that have values close to it have the safest emissions. That is wrong. D. The mean of the data set is the most important statistic because cell phones that have values close to it have the safest emissions, that is incorrect. So A is the correct option. Okay, um, question 10, an experiment was conducted to determine whether a deficiency of carbon dioxide in the soil affects the phenotype of peas. Listed below are the phenotype codes, where 1 is equal to smooth yellow, 2 is smooth green, 3 is wrinkled yellow, and 4 is wrinkled green. Do the results make sense? What is the mean phenotype code? Okay, uh, question 10 is my turn, right? My Turn of my calculator. We have one, three, one, two, four, four, three, three, one, four, one, one, four, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, calculate. Uh, the mean is to the nearest pen. To the nearest pen means to one decimal place. So that gives us 2.4, 2.4. The median uh, is 2.5. The mode is 1. Okay, the mode is 1. The mid-range is 2.5. Do the measures of Senna make sense? Uh, if you read the notes, because these are, these are actually qualitative, qualitative data. Uh, if you look at the notes we did in uh, descriptive statistics, the, the measure of Senna that is best for describing it is the mode. Okay. Uh, if we look at these options, we see uh, A, all the measures of Senna make sense since the data is numerical. Well, this data is not numerical. Uh, they just used this numerical, uh, the, it's, it's, the data is qualitative, but it has numerical representation, okay? But actually the data is a qualitative data. So A is out, you eliminate A, B, only the mean, median, and mode makes sense. Makes sense since the data is numerical. The data is not numerical, no. C. Only the mode makes sense since the data is nominal. Okay. D. Only the mean, median, and mid range makes sense since the data is nominal. Okay. For nominal data, we only the only thing that makes sense is the mode. The mode is the uh, measure of Senna for describing nominal data. So C is the correct option. Question 11, Stack Crunch. Listed below are the errors between the predicted temperatures and actual temperatures of a setting city. Find the mean and median for each of the two samples. Do the means and medians indicate that the temperatures predicted one day in advance are more accurate than those predicted five days in advance, as we might expect? Okay, um, I'm gonna use start crunch. So click here, open in start crunch. Um, if you want to see this well, you can just drag it, drag it to expand it, okay? So, uh, these are the errors, errors for the temperatures predicted one day earlier, errors for the temperatures predicted five days earlier. So, let's look at the main difference between actual high and the predicted high one day earlier is what? So we go to start, summary starts columns. Let us go ahead and select these two, okay, because the next question they might ask will be the one for five days earlier, okay? So we we'll click this and press the command key for Mac users. And for window users, you press uh, the shift key. Okay, you can see it here. So we can select these two. Then we click uh, mean and median. It's all we need here. So we click mean. Hold down the command key and click median. Then compute. So the mean for one day earlier, the mean is 0 0.4. The median, one day earlier, is 0. The mean, five days earlier, 
is negative 0 0.5. The median five days earlier is negative one. Okay. Do the means and medians indicate that the temperatures predicted one day in advance are more accurate than those predicted five days in advance, as we might suggest? Um, the, mean, the means and medians, if you look at this, uh, 0 0.4, negative 0 0.5, and then here is 0 and negative 1, uh, the differences are not much. They are not much. Okay, the differences are, are not much. You look at this, the differences are, are not much. Uh, so, no, the means and medians do not indicate any substantial difference in accuracy. Uh, the differences are not much, so I would go with C. Question 12. Uh, I know this is my turn, but uh, I think it's too much to type. Uh, and it's for two, two people, Terry and Debbie. So I think I will stay with Start Crunch for this one. <laughs> Statistics are sometimes used to compare or identify authors of different works. The lengths of the first 10 words in a book by Terry are listed with the first 10 words in a book by Davy. Find the mean and median for each of the two samples. Then compare the two sets of results. And with these two results, I'll prefer to use that crunch than using my calculator. Because with my calculator, I will type it for Terry and also type it for David, you know. So let me just use that crunch in this case. But at least you see, there are still some cases whereby you got to use my calculator. <laughs> at least for the case of mid-range. And then for the case of uh, mode, by modal data. Okay, by modal data. Mine still beats that crunch, right? <laughs> okay, so this is Terry David. I'm gonna go to stats, summary stats, columns. We're not, comp the main thing is for you to learn this and uh, understand it and do well in your in your uh, assignments tests and exam okay i'm not competing i'm not i'm not competing with ps no the main thing is the success of our students right the joy of a teacher is the success of his students samuel dominic chuku emeka okay let's select these two guys um and then we select the mean and median. The mean and then the median. Okay, compute. So for Terry's book, the mean is a 3.7. The median for Terry's book is three. The mean for David's book is 2.7. The uh, median for David's book is 3. Compare the two sets of results. Does there appear to be a difference? Um, of course, there's a difference for the mean. Okay, The median for both books are the same. But there's a difference for the mean. Uh, so let's look at the options. No, based on the results, words in Terry's book are the same length as the words in David's book. B, yes, based on the results, words in Terry's book are shorter than the words in David's book. Uh-uh, they are longer, okay? And there's actually a difference. So A and B will be eliminated, and we, we can go with C, yes. Based on the results, words in Terry's book are longer than the words in David's book. Okay. 
question 13 pennies made before 1983 are 97% copper and 3% zinc whereas pennies made after 1983 are 3% copper and 97% zinc listed below are the weights in grams of pennies from each of the two time periods. Find the mean and median for each of the two samples. Then compare the two sets of results. Uh, I'm going to use start crunch also in this case. Open the start crunch. Um, start, summary starts, columns. Select these two and then mean and median. Okay. Complete. So the mean before 1983, the mean to five decimal places as needed. So that will give us 3.11. Uh, the median is 3.10675. After 1983, the mean is 2.49248. After 1983, the median is 2.4928. Okay. Does there appear to be a considerable difference in the means? Okay. Like I said, considerable difference uh, significantly. If we see more than 5%, okay, if one value is more than 5% of the other, then there is. So let's pull up this calculator. Uh, let's take the five percent of this. Okay, zero point zero five times three point one one three three eight three three equal to. And let's subtract it. So I'm gonna put minus here and then plus. Subtract that from three point one one three three. Okay. You understand what I just did? So this is 2.95771, which is greater. It's greater than 2.4924833. So yes, the difference is more than 5%. So I'll go with B. Okay, difference is more than 5%. So I'll go with B. Question 14. <coughs> Waiting times in minutes of customers in a bank where all customers enter a single waiting line and a bank where customers wait in individual lines at three different teller windows are listed below. Find the mean and median for each of the two samples. Then compare the two sets of results. So... I'm gonna use start crunch also here. Opening start crunch. Um, we go to start summary stats columns. Select the two samples. Uh, select mean and median. Compute. So the mean for the customers in single line, the mean is seven point one two. The median is 7.2. For the customers in individual lines, the mean is 7.12. The median is 7.2. Okay. Uh, determine whether there is a difference between the two data sets. 
that is not apparent from a comparison of the measures of Senna? If so, what is it? Uh, a, the times for customers in a single line are much more varied than the times for customers in individual lines. B, the times of, for customers in individual lines are much more varied than the times for customers in a single line. C, there is no difference between the two data sets. Uh, in this question, I wouldn't say there is no difference between the two data sets. I mean, the, there's no difference between the mean and median. The mean for the two data sets and the median of the two data sets. There is no difference between the mean, the means of the two data sets and the medians of the two data sets. There is no difference. They are the same. For the mean, 7.12, 7.12. For the median, 7.2, 7.2. Um, so, but there is difference between the two data sets. Okay? The question C says there is no difference between the two data sets. No, that's, there is difference. Because the values are not the same. Even though they are measures of center for the mean and median are the same, but their values, their individual values are not the same. So C, we eliminate C. Now let's look at A and B. Uh, we look at, when we talk about variation, I know that we've not talked about variation, much more varied. One of the measures of variation uh, is range, one of the measures of variation. Uh, we call it measures of variation or measures of spread or measures of dispersion. So one of the values is range, which is the maximum minus minimum. If we look at the single line, um, the we have 6.4, 6.6, 6.7, 7.8, 7. 6. 7. 7. 7. 7. It's not really, you know, it's not really varied. I mean, the, the, the times are close to each other. We look at individual lines. We have 4.2 here and we have 9.8. Okay, so if you look at this, the range is small. The range is small. There's more variation in individual lines. The range for this single line is very small than when you compare with the individual lines. Uh, there's more variation for individual lines. Okay, so the correct option would be B. I choose B. Question 15. Use the magnitudes uh, of the earthquakes, and that is on the richer scale, uh, meant to, to me in measuring the intensity of earthquakes. Use the magnitudes of the earthquakes listed in the data set below. Find the mean and median of this data set. Is the magnitude of an earthquake measuring 7.0 on the Richard scale an outlier? What's an outlier? A data value that is very far away from the others when considered in the context of the sample data given in this data set. Explain. So let's, let's click on this data set. Oh, this is too much. Definitely, we, we've got to use a stat crunch. Definitely, this is too much data. Okay. So we open click. We open this icon, we click on it, we click here, open it, start crunch. And I'm just going to close this. Uh, I will name this, I will name it magnitudes. I like magnitudes. Okay. I can name it earthquake magnitudes. Earthquake magnitudes. Earthquake magnitudes. So, click stats, summary stats, columns, get equate magnitudes, click mean, 
name and then select medium okay and then click compute so the mean to three decimal places would be 1.437 the median is 1.375 1.375 okay uh, is the magnitude of an earthquake measuring 7.0 on the richer scale an outlier when considered in the context of the sample data given uh, well yes you look at the sample data actually. Look at this sample data. Look at it. See this sample data. What's the minimum? What's the maximum? I mean, even if we get the minimum and maximum, you'll be surprised. With seven is you can get minimum and maximum. Summary stars, seven, metrics. And I can get the mean. So look at it. Seven is too much. Seven is too much from two point seven five, two point seven nine. Please, outlier is different from uh, differing significantly. I know in in this video we talked about a uh, significant difference if it is more than five percent. Well, outlier there is a way we do outliers. There's a way we do outliers. Uh, there's a formula we use. So. Uh, we're going to do outliers more when we get to uh, measures of uh, position. Measures of position. We tell the uh, boundaries. We tell outliers. Outlier is if it's less than if it's less than the lower fence, and if it if it is greater than the upper fence, that is an outlier. So, uh this this data value is uh, yeah, to, uh, I can prove to you that seven is an outlier for this data, but uh, if you really want me to do it, then that means I have to copy the whole data, put it in this calculator, and you will see you will see that the seven you put it right here in this here you will see that seven will be greater than the upper fence whatever value you see here. If seven is greater than eight, then that is a, that means it's an outlier. Uh, but the the data set is much so. Uh, with this being the maximum two point seven nine, I think seven is is uh, an outlier in this context. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna say yes. It is very far away from all the other values. See. Uh, question 16, refer, refer to the data set of times in minutes required for an airplane to taxi out for takeoff listed below. Find the mean and median. How is it helpful to find the mean? So we click here. Uh, actually, let's close this. We click to get the data, this data is big, so we'll use start crunch. Open the start crunch. Close this. Um, I want to name this variable times, times, and I can put minutes in minutes. You, know, you can do that. Times in minutes. Okay, start, summary starts, columns, select the times. And we need the mean and median. Mean and median. Compute. So the mean to one decimal place. The mean is 33.7. And the median is just 34. How is it helpful to find the mean? Option A, the mean taxi out time is important 
for calculating and scheduling the arrival time. Uh, B, the mean taxi out time is important for determining the quality of the flight. No, quality. The mean does not determine the quality of the flight. No, okay. These are times. This is a continuous variable. It is continuous variable. It is a quantitative variable, not qualitative. No. So B is eliminated. C, the mean taxi out time is important for the condition of the run runway. A uh, condition of the runway we is also, you know, we can argue it is a qualitative. So no, C is eliminated. D, the mean taxi out time is not important. Uh, if it is not important, why are we learning it? <laughs> Well, um, I think A is the A is the preferred option. Uh, you can use the mean to calculate to schedule the arrival time for calculating and scheduling the arrival time. So I'll go with A. Okay. Uh, let's go with this. Question seventeen. Find the mean of the data summarized in the given frequency distribution. Compare the computed mean to the actual mean of 57.4 degrees. Uh, this is a grouped data. Is a group data. Okay. Uh, we did this before this uh, chapter. Uh, organizing data, data organization. So this is a group data, uh, and they just want us to find the mean. Uh, so we click here, click here, open a stat crunch. Uh, we will go to stat, summary stats. Now, rather than selecting columns, we will select grouped slash bin data. This is a group data. So you don't select columns, select this grouped slash bin data. The beans, the groups are in the temperature, low temperature, okay, that's the variable. And the counts are the frequency. So make sure you select the, the groups, okay, the class intervals, which is the low temperature and the frequency, the counts are in frequency. And you select just the mean, because that is what they asked us, mean. You click Compute. So the mean to the nearest tenth, nearest tenth is one decimal place. The mean is 52.6. Okay. Which of the following best describes the relationship between the computed mean and the actual mean. Uh, the computed mean A, the computed mean is close to the actual mean because the difference between the means is more than 5%. Okay, let's see the 5% of this. Uh, let's see. So we know what option to take. 5% uh, of 57.4. So we say... 0 0.05 times 57.4 and then subtract this from 57.4 so this is 54.53 and the uh, this is the actual mean uh, sorry this is the this is the computed mean this is the actual mean the computed mean is 52.55556. And the actual mean is 57.4. But now 5% of 57.4 is 54.53. And that is greater than the computed mean. Is greater. So it's more than that. So option B is out and option D is out. So we look at options A and C. Okay, we look at options A and C. 
So the computed mean is close to the actual mean because the difference between the means is more than 5%. The computed mean is not close to the actual mean because the difference between the means is more than 5%. If it is, we see here that it's more than 5% and uh, uh, because of that we say it's significantly different. So I will go with C. It's not close to the actual mean because the difference between the means is more than 5%. Okay. Uh, uh, 54.53 is greater than 52.6. Okay. So I'll go with C. Uh, let's close this. Question 18. Find the mean of the data summarized in the given frequency distribution. Compare the computed mean to the actual mean of 51.1 miles per hour. So we click here, open a start crunch. Um, start. Summary stats, group data. The beans are in speed, which is in miles per hour. Counts are in frequency. And we just click mean, computes. So the mean is 46.8. 46.8. Yeah. Which of the following best describes the relationship between the computed mean and the actual mean? So uh, this is the actual mean, 51.1. Let's find 5% of it. Where is that calculator? Where is it? Um, where is that small calculator? Seems to be hiding. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna pull. I'm gonna pull it up again. I probably closed it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Um. And uh, where was that? All right. Uh, we were in question 18, right? Question 18. Okay. No, stay. No, stay. Okay. I've not even answered this yet. Okay. All right. Uh, Let's find the five percent of this. So zero point zero five times uh, fifty one point one equal to, and then let's subtract it from fifty one point one fifty So this is forty eight point five four. It is more than forty six point eight. It's more than that. So the computed mean is not close to the actual mean. Because the difference between the means is more than that. Now, if it is less than that, then you can say it's close. Okay, but if it is if the difference is more than five percent, then it is not close. Okay. And I'm gonna just minimize this. Question 19. Because the mean is very sensitive to extreme values. It is not a resistant measure of center. That's right. The trim mean is more resistant. Yeah, that's why we use trim mean if we really want to use the mean. Otherwise, the median is resistant to extreme values, to outliers. Okay, so the trim mean is more resistant. To find the 10% trim mean for a data set, first arrange the data in order. Then delete the bottom 10% of the values 
and the top 10% of the values. Then calculate the mean of the remaining values. For the following credit rating, credit rating scores, find the mean, the 10% trim mean, and the 20% trim mean. How do the results compare? Uh, so, okay, when we talk about being sensitive to uh, extreme values or being resistant, resistant, if we say a measure is resistant, that means uh, it, is, uh, it is not sensitive to extreme values. A uh, median is resistant to outliers. Outliers are the extreme values. Extremely high values or extremely low values. They are outliers. Uh, they differ they differ greatly from the values of the data. Uh, with the median, you ju you're just picking the center, center of the data. Okay, for instance, let's say you have a class of 8th graders, right? In a class of 8th grade students, you have somebody there who is 30 years old. Or let's say you have somebody who is 40 years old, okay? So that person, the age, could be considered that age is an outlier. Or maybe you have people that weigh, weigh you have several maybe basketball players weighing, let's say, 190 pounds. And then you have another one that weighs like 350 pounds. Or you have another one that weighs like uh, 50 pounds. So the 50 pounds and the 350 pounds, they are really extreme. Okay? They are outliers. We have, a, we have formulas to find outliers anyway. With the mean, the mean takes into account all the data values. So let's say you, you, know, you want to find the mean of the weights. If you remove those outliers, then that is what we call trim mean. With the trim mean, if you really want to use the mean rather than using the median, because the median does not take into account all the values. If you really want to use the mean, then you can trim it. That is, remove those outliers and then find the mean. That is what we call trim mean. Uh, some people might argue that with trim mean, you still... Uh, you still remove some values anyway. Okay, you're not taking into account all the value because one of the advantages of the mean is that the mean is computed by taking into account every data value. You're not segregating anybody or removing anybody. No, but the median, all we need is just the middle value. When after we have arranged it in ascending or descending order. Uh, with the mean, it's not so. The mean takes into account every data value. With trim mean, you're trying to use the mean, but you want to use a mean that is not sensitive to outliers. So you just go ahead and remove those outliers, and then you find the mean. So we call it trim mean. Some statisticians use trim mean. Okay, so this is what we do. We go to open this in start crunch. First of all, let's find the mean. Um, they didn't. Get, this is scores, credit rating scores. So I'm gonna name this as scores. I uh, go to start summary stats columns. Select scores and find the mean. The mean is. 710.1 710.1 Okay Now the 10% trim mean uh, For us to find the 10% trim mean This is what we do I'm going to close this here uh, The sample size is 20 The sample size is 20 10% of 20 is 2 10% of 20 is 2, okay? Just 10% is 0 0.1 times 20. That gives you 2. So what this is saying is, I'm going to remove the first 2 and the bottom 2. 
However, you have to first of all arrange the data in order for you to find the trim mean. Arrange the data in order. So, and the ascending order is the way to go. Okay. Why do you need ascending order? Because you start from the kindergarten to the first grade, to the second grade, to the third grade, to the fourth grade. Uh, that's why I usually ask my students, just arrange, sort your data in ascending order. It's much better. When we do measures of position to find the quartiles, the percentiles, it's better you arrange it in ascending order. Uh, so we're going to sort this data. So look at what I'm going to do, folks. Look at what I will do. Uh, we start crunch. We will first of all sort this data. Uh, go to data. Click on data. Go to sort. I select the data scores. And I want it by default, it is in ascending order. Okay. And I just click compute. So it gives me the new column, the sorted data added to data table. So this is sorted data. This is how we sort our data. I know even in my own, I sort the data, as you can see, in my calculator. I sort it in ascending order. If you want to sort it with start crunch, that is the way you do it. You go to data, you sort it. Then I'm going to remove the top 10%, which is two, the first two and the bottom two. I will trim it. That's why we say trim mean. I'm going to trim it. Remove the uh, remove the top two and the bottom two. So let me just go ahead uh, and uh, uh, copy this data. L let me duplicate. Let me. I can. I can use this. Uh, this sorted. The sorted data. By the way, but. Let me just duplicate it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to duplicate this so I don't use it. I'm trying to duplicate this uh, column. So I go to Edit, Columns, and I click on Duplicate. What column do I want to duplicate? I, the sorted data is what I want. So I can just use that. So I click Compute. Okay? And it tells me du Duplicate. So I'm just showing you this uh, if you're going to work with data, you know, I don't, whatever you might find yourself working. Um, the 10% trim mean is I have to trim two, the top two and the bottom two. So I'll just go here and I just delete this. I delete it, period. And then I come back here, I delete this, I delete this too. Okay. And that is it. Then I go to start, I go to start, I go to summary stats, columns, and I'm using this right now, the duplicate data, because I removed it, and I click mean, and then I compute. So that gives me 729, 729, okay? Then 20% trim mean, 20% of 20, okay, 20% of 20 is 4. 20% of 20 is 4. So I've removed the first two. I just removed the next two to make it removing 4. Okay? The same thing with the bottom. So it's like removing the, uh, the top 4 and the bottom 4. Okay? That is what I just did. 20% trim mean. So then I go to start. Summary stats, columns, I click, this is what I'm using here, okay? And if you want to name this, that's fine. What I used, you can rename it if you want to rename it. Then I click on mean, I click compute. Rounding to one decimal place as needed, this gives me 734.8, okay? How do the results compare? Um, A, the distribution of the data may be skewed to the right because the mean appears to decrease slightly 
as values are changed. B, the distribution of the data may be skewed to the left because the mean appears to increase slightly as values are changed. C, there is zero skew in the distribution of the data because the three means are almost exactly equal. At skewness, we've talked about skewness in the previous videos. Um, I'm just going to close this here. Um, as you see this, without three minutes, this is 710.1. 10% trim mean is, you just trim the top two and the bottom two. The mean becomes 729. You trim the top four and the bottom four, the mean became a 734.8. So it's increasing. Now, let me say this real fast. I'm going to go to notes, uh, solve the examples on measures of center and measures of spread. I want to show you something. Uh, you go to this here. Uh, yeah, look at this slide here. This is skewed right. Okay, this is skewed right, right, and this is skewed left. You see that? This is skewed right. The pointed is to the right. This is skewed left because the pointed is to the left. See that? So, if you were looking at this mean, if you were going to graph this mean in a histogram, right, it starts from 710 to 729 to 738. So, the distribution will be skewed left, as you can see. Skewed left. Starts from the smallest, going to the biggest. Okay? So, the distribution may be skewed to the left because the mean appears to increase slightly as values are changed. Uh, the B is the correct option, because the A would be, if it's skewed right, then it appears to decrease slightly as values are changed now. But as we see here, as the values are changed, the mean is increasing slightly. Okay? So B is the preferred option. It's the correct option. Okie dokie. Uh, I think I can go ahead and close it. Uh, I can go ahead and close this. Question 20. The geometric mean is often used in business and economics for finding average rates of change, average rates of growth, or average ratios. Given n values, all of which are positive, the geometric mean is the nth root of their product. The average growth factor for money compounded at annual interest rates of 10.2%, 7.9%, and 1.9% can be found by computing the geometric mean of 1.102, 1.079, and 1.019. Find that average growth factor or geometric mean. That's the first thing. Okay, um, I think we've been using stat crunch, right? <laughs> now, it's my turn. So let's get to geometric mean. Uh, I have it on my calculator. I don't think stat crunch has geometric mean. I don't think so. But let's use my calculator. You go here, you click on geometric mean. Um, so this is the geometric mean. Uh, and I'm going to type these values here. They say found by computing the geometric mean of 1.102. 1.079 and then press calculate so the the geometric mean is the average growth factor round to four decimal places as needed so this will be 1.06 
one. Okay, one point zero six six one. Okay. <coughs> Then it says here, the single percentage growth rate that would be the same as having three successive growth rates of 10.2%, 7.9%, and 1.9% is what? And they want us to round to two decimal places as needed. So the single percentage growth rate, what we need to do is... Uh, this calculator was here before. What we need to do actually is this. Uh, okay, it's now here. Um, I'm gonna subtract this. Uh, I'm gonna subtract one from the geometric mean and then I multiply by 100 to get the percentage. Okay, so 1.0661. Minus one. Now this is the single percent. This is a single growth rate, but then I want it in percent, so I do times hundred, uh, and that is a six point six one percent. So this is six point six one percent. Okay. Uh, the mean. Of 10.2%, 7.9%, and 1.9% is what? So in this case, I'm going to use arithmetic mean. If they didn't say geometric mean, then they mean arithmetic mean. So I'm just going to go to measures of center. Let me reset this. Uh, I type in a 1.2. One zero two. Uh, you know what? I'm not gonna type in one point one zero two. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna type in ten point two, ten point two percent. Okay, I will leave the percent. So I have ten point two, seven point nine, and then one point nine. That was the question they asked here. Okay, and then I press calculate. I just need the mean. So the mean in this case, to so two decimal places, is 6.67. 6.67. Okay, so the single percentage growth rate, um, uh, is not 6.61% and 6.67%. They are different. It's not the same as the mean of 10.2%, 7.9%, and 1.9%, okay? All right, I think we finished with the calculations. Wow. Question 21. Methods used, methods used that summarize or describe characteristics of data are called descriptive statistics. A value at the center or middle of a data set is a measure of center or measures of me measure of central tendency. They tend towards the center. Which of the following is not a measure of center? Census, of course. Which of the following is not a characteristic of the mean? Uh, the mean takes every data value into account, that's right. The mean is sensitive to outliers, that's correct. The mean is called the average by statisticians. Okay, some statisticians call it that. The mean is relatively reliable. Um, well, in th this particular question, some statisticians say mean or average. Honestly, that's what, you know, some statisticians say. But in this particular context, uh, some people refer to average, you know, different way, different meanings. Uh, and considering the fact that with the mean, you can have arithmetic mean, geometric mean, harmonic mean. Uh, I think I would go with this uh, option here. 
because it's not really clear. Uh, some people say average. Uh, some people say mean. So I will just go with C. Okay. Uh, the measure of Senna, that is the value that occurs with the greatest frequency. That's the mode. The mode, the value with the greatest frequency. Which of the following is always true? Always true. A, that as Q to the right have a longer left tail than right tail. Uh, B, for skewed data, the mode is farther out in the longer tail than the median. C, in a symmetric and bell-shaped distribution, the mean, median, and mode are the same. D, the mean and the, the mean and median should be used to identify the shape of the distribution. Uh, C is always true uh, when we do normal distribution, uh, which is one of the properties of normal distribution uh, is that it's symmetric, it has a bell-shaped uh, curve. And in a in a symmetric in a bell-shaped curve, a symmetric distribution, the mean is equal to the median, which is equal to the mode. Okay, and then I will just click save. Uh, thank you so much for listening to this video session. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And you have a good uh